Fast chops on drums. If you clicked on this video, you've probably seen videos like this. Or this. Or this. And wondered, how do I do that? Well, I was in the same boat. In about 2013, I started seeing these videos and became obsessed with how to play this style of drum chops. And today I'll do my best to condense into a single video the elements you probably need to master to chop like your favorite drum videos. I'm Nate, and some people call me the AD20 drummer. I wasn't born with great chops, and I'm still a long way from my favorite drummers. But I have one advantage when it comes to explaining this kind of drumming. I started exactly where you are. And now I can do stuff like this. So if you're interested in listening to a guy who started with basically zero knowledge and had to put it all together to get to this point, tell you what I recommend, then keep watching. I'll break down what I think is happening and give you some exercises that will get you started on this journey to chops. Am I the last word? Absolutely not. The learning continues and I'll probably be back with another update in 2025. But this is my best current understanding. Today on 8020, how to do those fast chops you hear, um, choppers do on the drums. Stay tuned. And guys, we're going to be sharing a lot of exercises in this video, and you might be tempted to transcribe them. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to do that. We've done it for you. We put it all together for you in a free workbook. That's right, I said free. You can get it for free by clicking the link below the player and entering your email address in on the next page, and just telling us where to send it. With that, let's get on with the lesson. Let's start by defining the type of chops we're talking about. In short, it's this, which I've been calling Berkeley chops. Both because I got a cease and desist letter for using the 20 teens word, and also because it's now become much broader. But it's a type of fusion influenced drumming that became prominent in churches in the early 2000s, which probably reached the zenith with stuff like the Soul Tone Cymbal Channel, and which now is dispersed into many styles of playing. You'll see contemporary drummers switch seamlessly from something resembling Berkeley chops to something my friend Forrest calls Buff Hello Kitty, which evokes JD Beck and Mark G, to the sort of neo-funk style you're likely to hear from Nate Smith or Corey Fonville, to stuff from the sort of Chris Dave tradition. And I do this too. Okay, now same disclaimer I've offered in other videos. Being able to chop like this is probably not the thing that's gonna decide whether you get the gig. Far more importantly that you can play in time, learn songs quickly, know what to play for different parts of the music, just general musical sensitivity, etc. But just in the way being able to drift isn't necessarily going to help your F1 career, but most F1 drivers know their way around a donut, being able to chop kind of comes along for the ride with loving the drums. And just like drifting, it can be fun. With all that out of the way, let's tackle how to chop. At root, what I'm doing when I chop is stringing combos together. Take this little improvisation. I can identify three to four different idioms I'm doing, but it's nothing actually that fancy. Let's play at roughly half speed to make the point, and let's ask my editor to highlight each of the four categories of things as they come up. The first is linear combos made up of singles and kick drum notes like this. The second is anything using diddles, usually on the snare to connect accents and kick drum notes like this. The third is combinations of flams or double stops with either the hats or ride cymbals. And the fourth and final is legato runs of singles down the tops. Let's show this at full speed again. Can you hear when I'm doing the component parts? Anyway, we can practice each of these approaches in isolation, then work on stitching them together. First, let's talk about what's probably the simplest category, linear combos. These are just combos of, let's say, between one and four singles with the hands and one and two strokes with the bass drum. The classic way to identify these is with this numerator denominator thing, like a fraction. Except the top number just shows how many hand strokes, and the bottom number shows how many foot strokes. 
So one over one would just be one hand stroke and one foot. Two over one is just two hand strokes and one foot. Using those rules, one to four in the numerator, one to two in the denominator, let's just pull a few out of the hat. Three over two, not the most basic, but you will see these five note patterns occasionally. Four over two, very common in all genres. This is a pretty classic metal and prog film. Three over one, also very common. Two over two, another classic. If you want a fun exercise, you can just choose any two out of the proverbial hat and just practice switching between them. Here I'm doing three over one and two over two. Couple of ground rules. Usually when you're doing the hand strokes, they're singles starting with the lead hand. Also, I'd practice the singles as accents on the toms and rim shots on the snare, at least for now. As long as you follow these rules, you can orchestrate these practically anyway. But eventually, you're going to want to add some connective tissues to these licks to kind of knit things together. That's where our diddle rudiments come into play. And I'm going to show you the one that's the king. Right, left, left kick. So much in this little rudiment. Watch me make a quick solo using only the linear stuff from the first part of this video and right, left, left kick. For most of these styles of fill, these will get you most of the way. Couple of notes when it comes to executing these. The first stroke of each of these three is accented on any tom and a rim shot on the snare. The other hand strokes are unaccented. The reason for this is it produces the cool terraced dynamics you hear David Garibaldi doing here. And Thomas Pridgen here. To get that tight sound, this is the style. Big contrast between the accents and ghost strokes, and ghost strokes in the center of the head with stick height an inch or less above the drum. Now, let's make a fun exercise and switch between one of our linear patterns from the first part and one of these diddle rudiments from this most recent part. I'm choosing two four beat phrases. I'll do right, left, left kick and two over two. I can play as many of each as I want, and I can orchestrate them anywhere. I like to call this the switching exercise. I think JP Bouvet calls it something else. Let's choose one more. This time I'll choose a harder one. Let's do right, left, right, right, left, kick, and three over one. That's a four beat phrase and a six beat one, which means you'll have to be more careful that your phrases land on one. Learning to phrase over the bar line is a whole other ball of wax, but you get the idea. Let's just pause for a minute. If you worked on only the stuff I've shown you up to this point in the video, you could get a long way and make some pretty interesting solos and spend a long time refining. It's not really about having a million licks. It's about being able to play licks cleanly and in time and switch amongst them and orchestrate creatively. But let's show you the two other categories of things I do for fun. Here's Joshua Crawford playing a solo. One thing Joshua does really well is use extended linear licks to smooth things out. Here's Dana Hawkins, same thing. Fast singles instead of just rapid fire combos. This will give variety to your fills and solos. In linear parlance, we're talking about stuff like seven over one or even 15 over one. But let's take seven over one, a little eight beat phrase with singles. Of course, we can just play them on the floor tom or orchestrate them down the toms. But you'll want ways to continue the lick and just petering out on the floor tom doesn't always satisfy. Just trust me. That's why I like the transition to the hi-hats with the bark. As I hit the kick drum at the end of the lick, I'll just hit the hats with the left and make a bark. Sometimes you'll get a six over one if you start the phrase with the kick drum. In that case, since the sticking is reversed, I'll often just cross over and hit the hats with the right hand. 
Here I am improvising some of these extended singles runs. Telling you exactly what to do is a little like saying, if you get to Dubai, use this specific ATM. Something to file away for later, but it's useful, trust me. Before we get to our last example, if you made it this far in the video, you're obviously interested in this stuff. And I've got an on-demand self-directed course that goes way deeper into these concepts with hours of video examples, explanations, practice prompts, and transcriptions of everything. It's called the Solo Course and I only release it to my mailing list. And if you're watching this video in late March of 2024, we're actually just about to open that up for enrollment. If you want to get on the list to hear about it and also get the free transcriptions for this video, just click the link below the player. So the final category of thing I was doing in my chop out at the top of this video, combos of flams and cymbal or hat double stops. Watch Thomas Pridgen here. He uses a lot of this type of thing and it's one thing I think makes his playing special. To keep it simple, I'll give you two versions of a rudiment to use here. We'll do a kick and cymbal, and then we'll do a snare and cymbal version of the second one. The first is kick left left kick, where the first kick coincides with the cymbal strike. Simple, right? The second is kick left right right left kick, with the same thing. If we invert this into flam left, right, right, left kick, and make the flam a rim shot on the snare and a cymbal strike, that sounds like this. And we can combine the bass drum version and snare version to make a cool Thomas Pridgen sounding lick. Just as with the other stuff, we can make switching exercises between these flam double stop idioms and stuff earlier in the lesson. Here I am combining a six stroke snare flam thing with two over two from the first part. Now let's go back to me just improvising or chopping a little. Can you hear those source elements better now? Finally, a note on getting more fluent with this stuff. It's definitely true that in order to chop fast, you have to chop slow. So I practice all this stuff on the slow side and don't be in a hurry. It's also true that as the tempo creeps up, you're going to have to start leaving more space between the punches. And using stuff like the extended singles on the toms and extended paradiddles on the snare to space it out more so it sounds like a nice phrase to a listener. Finally, you'll see many great drummers doing crossovers and fancy orchestrations and doubles that intentionally cross the kit with the single stick because it looks cool or it's an extension of a sticking that feels really logical. Once you master the basics, you can experiment with those extensions too, but don't sweat them for now. Did we do a thing? Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this sort of exhaustive top to bottom review of chopping in 2024. How did these land? Leave a comment below the player. And if you'd like a free transcription of this, and to be notified the next time the solo course is opening up, just click the link below the player and enter your email address in on the next page. Dudes, it's been real. Always enjoy these. See you again real soon in another lesson of the week.